In this video, we are going to cover the second part of sines and cosines. It's lesson 504. Um, we are going to cover how to use the inverse of sine and cosine to find the measure of an angle. And we're also going to learn how to apply uh, trigonometric identities to solve a problem. So the first thing, remember on the calculator, um, the sine and then cosine and then tangent are all next to each other. So to get the inverse, you want to hit second and then sine to get inverse of sine, and then second cosine in order to get the inverse of cosine. So remember, with all the trig functions, we have this uh, we have this way that we remember it, this nonsense word, and we call it SOHCAHTOA. And remember that means sine is opposite over hypotenuse, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, and tangent is opposite over adjacent. So what this does is help us learn which trig function, or remember which trig function uh, we want to use depending on the information given. So we can use the scientific calculator, the inverse sine or the cosine, to find the measure of an acute angle of a right triangle if you know the length of one of the legs and the hypotenuse. So here, if we're given 10 millimeters and 15 millimeters, side AB is 15, side AC is 10. If we want to find the measure of angle B, the first thing that we would have to figure out is which trig function uh, we would use. Okay, so remember SOHCAHTOA. So if we look here, we have a opposite angle because it's directly opposite. And then we have a hypotenuse, opposite over hypotenuse. So if it's opposite over hypotenuse, then the trig function we would want to use is sine. So that would mean then uh, that we would take the inverse of sine and we put opposite over hypotenuse. So we have 10 over 15, and that's going to tell us what the measure of angle B is. So if we do that, and remember, when you turn on your calculator, the first thing you want to check is that you're in degree mode. So you're going to go to mode, scroll down, and then you're going to arrow over to degree and hit enter. Okay, so you want to make sure that it says the degree is highlighted. So now we're going to take sine. We're going to take second and then the inverse of sine. So sine negative 1. And we're going to put 10 over 15. And so that tells us that the angle is approximately 41.8. So I know that that angle would be 41.8. And then, if I wanted to find angle A, now all I would have to do is just know what, uh, know what I know about the sum of a triangle, that it equals 180, because I know that this is 90. So if I take 41.8 and add it to 90, that's 131.8. And then if I take 180 and subtract, then that's going to give me approximately 48.2. For angle A. So that would be the way we could go about doing that angle. A trig identity is an equation that contains a trig ratio that's true for all the values of the variable. There are lots of trig identities um, and uh, we will talk about uh, just a couple today. The first identity involves all three of the trig ratios. So uh, what this one that this one says that the tangent of X equals sine x over cosine x. So what it's saying is that if we know what sine x and cosine x are, if we know those ratios, then we'll know uh, what the tangent ratio is. And the reason that this is true is because if we were to plug in these ratios, so I have tangent x here, remember that sine x, right? Here we have SOHCAHTOA, right? That's our way we remember. <clears throat> So we know that the sine of x is opposite over hypotenuse. And we know that cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So if I multiply by the uh, reciprocal here, so if I take uh, hypotenuse over adjacent, okay, that's going to cancel out uh, these two right here, okay, and then these two right here. And look, I'm left with opposite over adjacent which is true, right? Tangent x is opposite over adjacent. 
So if I have the ratio of sine x and cosine x, I can find the tangent of x. Another trig identity that we have is that the square of sine x plus the square of cosine x is always going to equal 1. So whatever the ratio of sine x is, if we take that number and square it and we add it to the square of cosine x, it's going to equal 1. So here's kind of how we would use uh, these trig identities here. It says given the sine and cosine ratios below, what is the tangent of angle x? So we know that tangent equals sine over cosine x. So here we can say that tangent equals 7 over 25 over 24 over 25. So these two cancel each other out, right, because they're both on the bottom, and then we're left with 7 over 24. So tangent x is going to equal 7 over 24. This one says, if sine x equals 0.7345, what is cosine x? Well, remember, we know that sine squared x plus cosine squared x equals 1. So here, if I know sine x, right, I know that 0.7345 squared plus cosine squared x equals 1. So now all I have to do is take 0.7345 and I'm going to square that, so 0 0.7345 times 0.7345 is about 5, uh, excuse me, 0.5394 plus cosine squared x. Now we're going to subtract that 0 0.5394 from both sides. So if I take 0 0.5394, subtract that from 1, that's going to give me cosine squared x equals 0 0.4606. And so it's squared, so what I'm going to do is take the square root of both to get cosine x. So now I take 0 0.4606, and I take the square root of that, and that's going to give me 0 0.4606. Six, seven, eight, six. So I know that cosine x is 0.6786. For this one, it says, what is the approximate measure of angle C? If AB is 5 meters and AC is 16 meters. Okay, so I'm given the ratio and I want the angle. So I know I'm talking about inverse. But first, I have to know which one of these trig functions am I going to use the inverse of, sine, cosine, or tangent. So if I look right here, okay, I've got opposite, and then I have adjacent, opposite over adjacent. So that means I'm going to use tangent. So the inverse tangent of 5 over 16 <laughs> Go here to the calculator. So we say second tangent to get our inverse. And then 5 over 16. And that's going to give us around 17 degrees. So because it's that approximate, so we'll just round it up. It didn't say approximate word around it. but So we'll say around 17 degrees. We'll just round it up to the next whole degree. So that would give us 17 degrees. And just as a last reminder, remember, when you're doing your uh, trig functions, it has to be in degree mode. So you got to press mode, and then you have to go and make sure that degree is highlighted. And that's the end of sine and cosine 2.